Hi, you've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, October 22nd. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Gulf of Mexico, and Invest 93L uh, got enough organization last night for the NHC to designate it Tropical Depression 9, and we see a nice little thunderstorm going off over it this morning, uh, but uh, rather disorganized still overall. If we look at the recon data, we see very light winds all around here. There's a little patch of 30 knot winds at flight level here. Pressure 1003, this is actually up a couple of millibars from the mission yesterday, but you can see very light winds and uh, the I don't have the pressure graph up, but the pressure gradient is very weak in this whole area as well. In other words, the pressure doesn't fall very quickly toward the center, which in general indicates kind of a broad lackluster circulation, although it is closed in here. Uh, but this is moving east slowly toward the Yucatan coastline, and there's the potential for this to bring tropical storm force winds with it, and so there are warnings up all up and down this coastline here. But if we look at the satellite, there's still clearly wind shear out of the west as these upper clouds race from that direction. And this is hampering organization in addition to its non-tropical partner off to the east. And you can see it firing lots of convection, essentially competing for resources here. You note that the low-level winds... I'm making this early so I can't show you visible images yet, but on the IR you can still see the low-level clouds heading almost due north here in the Western Caribbean. And this is bad news for TD9 because you want these trade winds to be converging toward the storm's location if the storm is going to benefit from the convergence or piling up of air that forces air to rise in the vicinity of the storm. Instead, the trade winds are getting redirected up here toward Cuba and really helping out the non-tropical part of the storm that's being influenced by this jet stream to the north here and is non-tropical in nature, but is stealing now, if you will, some of the convergence from the trade winds and really has the better environment compared to the actual tropical entity over here. So uh, this is struggling now, and of course we'll be moving inland over the Yucatan over the next couple of days, and interaction with land is going to keep this weak. And uh, the question now is whether it can do anything once it comes out on the other side of the Yucatan. The main concern right now is heavy rains for this whole area as the system comes across, obviously has no time to really strengthen before moving over the Yucatan, um, so heavy rain is the primary concern at the moment. If we look at the water vapor imagery again, you can see the blasting shear out of the southwest for this whole area gets a little bit lighter in the northwest Caribbean where the system is going, but we see this uh, short wave coming over Wyoming right now, and this will be diving southeast in the wake of this trough currently over the eastern seaboard, and as it does so, there's going to be a big shot of dry air that comes out of the north. And as this thing comes out over the Caribbean, it's going to have to deal with this dry air uh, coming off the continent. And it will be interesting to see how organized this system is once it comes out over the water again. Uh, chances are, given how weak it is at the moment, it will not be very strong looking when it comes off and indeed could look very little like anything as it comes off of the Yucatan Peninsula but the models continue to disagree on the future of this storm. The GFS has it come out and then strengthen and turn north as a hurricane over western Cuba by day six, and uh, the H wharf shows a little bit of strengthening as well. But the GFS is the most bullish model here, and it's the only trustworthy model, if you will. None of them are truly trustworthy, but as far as uh, skill goes, the GFS is one of our only good models that is showing this developing significantly. Uh, but if we look at a uh, couple days further back, this is day six, this is day four, this would be on Sunday. The system is just now starting to strengthen on the GFS. Note that we have our polar jet stream to the north here in these, uh, this band of red and yellow. And then we have this band of darker blue and green here. And this is the subtropical jet stream screaming in a straight line across the southern gulf. And this is 40 to 50 knot winds, so I do say screaming even though the colors don't look it. This is a fast uh, jet as far as a tropical storm is concerned. So if you have something trying to develop down here, I mean, this jet, it's straight, it's not curved in an anticyclonic fashion, so it's not very favorable for a system developing in here. Yes, the shear is kind of light uh, south of the Cayman Islands here, but try moving the storm north, and I think you'll find that this is a rather unfavorable situation for anything trying to come out of the Caribbean in late October. Once you get the subtropical jet established, it's very hard to break. 
and so while the GFS might be right that we see it try to reform out here after sitting over the water, if it tries to move north, um, I doubt we'll see any significant development, and the H wharf shows the same kind of thing, tries to strengthen it, 997 millibars here by Sunday, but again you see the subtropical jet, and this is really not a favorable configuration, in fact most of the divergence is offset to the east anyway, and uh, the straight jet here, it's just not a favorable looking upper level pattern, and that combined with the dry shot from the north, I still think will keep this uh, weaker as it comes out over the Caribbean. And it's impossible to say for sure whether or not we will see regeneration of the storm over the Caribbean. But right now, like I said yesterday, I continue to think that the GFS is making this look too easy. And I have strong doubts that we will actually see this kind of a storm over western Cuba by day six. But obviously interest in the Northwest Caribbean should monitor the situation just in case uh, the GFS is picking up on something here. But right now the National Hurricane Center does agree with me that uh, this is likely to stay weak once it comes off the Yucatan. Of course, again, as I said, things can always change in the tropics, so keep your eye out. But right now the main concern is very heavy rains over the Yucatan, and especially up here in Cuba and the Bahamas and South Florida as well, because again, we have this non-tropical part of the system that is going to be moving northeast over the coming days, interacting with the, the jet stream and the trough coming down and uh, therefore more rain may fall up here, not directly associated with Tropical Depression 9 than with the Tropical Depression itself over the Yucatan. So this whole area here going to be lashed with rain over the coming days. So we will keep a close eye on this system as it wanders around in our neck of the woods. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.